If you just got an air fryer, then this video is for you. Hey, I'm Lisa Childs, and today I'm sharing with you the top things that you should start making in your air fryer today. The air fryer is good for so many things, and if you're new, make sure you watch my air fryer playlist right here. There's a bunch of recipes, cleaning guide, all the things to help you get started with your air fryer. Okay, I use my air fryer every single day, and these are some of the things I make over and over again, so let's start with the first one. The first thing I tell everyone to use their air fryer for is leftover pizza. Pizza reheated in the air fryer tastes just as good, if not better than when you got it from the restaurant. So we are going to transform this cold set pizza into something amazing. And here's some tips. To transform your leftover pizza, you can just put it in the air fryer just like this on top of the rack that it comes with. Or here's a tip that we really like to do. What I like to do is take each piece of pizza Take the crust and just do a little bit of butter on the crust like this. And you can even do it on the whole pizza. <laughs> it's actually really good that way, but it does, you know, add a little grease. It's a little bit easier with softened butter. So I butter the crust and then I take, so, oops, I take some garlic salt. This is the red mineral salt, of course. And then I just shake some all over the pizza and the crust. And then I'm just gonna take some crushed red pepper flakes and put them directly on the cold pizza. When you do it like this, the chilies kind of bloom and they get so much more fragrant than if you had put them on after. They taste amazing. And next we'll add it to our air fryer. You can preheat your air fryer if you like, but I rarely do just because I don't think about it all the time. This is also one of the reasons why I like to recommend a larger size basket because if you get a small air fryer, you can only fit like one piece of pizza. Then I'm going to air fry my pizza at 400 degrees or however high your air fryer goes. And I'm just gonna go for about two minutes. After I press start, this is going to preheat and then start counting down. It's a total of about four minutes. Here's our air fryer pizza. Look how golden brown and delicious it is. You can tell that the crust is super just golden crispy. The cheese has like re-melted and browned. Oh my gosh, this is so good. The cool thing about making it in the air fryer is that the bottom is nice and crispy. It's not soggy like when you get it out of the microwave. This is one of our favorite things. One of my absolute favorite foods on planet Earth are almond croissants. And when I can't get them at a fancy French bakery, I love to get them at Costco. Costco sells them with their pastries in these two four packs. You can choose any two. So they have like the cherry ones, the cream cheese ones. My favorite are the cream cheese and the almond. So these are good on their own as is. And they're even better warmed up just even in the microwave. They get a little soft and just oh they're so good but they are the best in the air fryer so all you have to do is take a pastry put it in the air fryer and then i'm only going to put it in for about one minute at 400 degrees you can check on it about halfway through or you can add more time if you want it a little bit more crispy but this just makes everything amazing. If you have any pastries or danishes that have a little bit of frosting or glaze on them, the top gets nice and caramelized and crystallized. It is so heavenly and I know you will love it. Next, I love to make leftovers. Literally anything that was made in the oven tastes better reheated in the air fryer versus the microwave. So this last weekend I made some brie cheese. This is a wheel of brie it was wrapped in puff pastry. It has like a walnut fig like filling jam, but Obviously, I'm not going to put this entire thing back in the oven and I don't want to eat the whole thing. So I just took a little piece of the brie cheese, put it in a oven safe dish. And instead of warming up my huge oven, waiting for it to preheat and using the oven for 20 or 30 minutes just to get this little piece of brie to melt down and get crispy again, I'm going to use the air fryer. So like I said, I just took the piece of brie, I put it in an oven safe dish. Next, I'm going to air fry it. Okay, there are two options for something that is a small portion like this. The first option is to put it at a lower temperature in the air fryer and do it for a longer period of time, or I like to just kind of blast it. I'm gonna cover it with foil, put it in the air fryer, and then I'm going to cook it for about just five minutes or so. And then I'm going to take off the foil for about one or two minutes to crisp up the top. And here is the finished brie. Oh, look how good that is. I am obsessed with brie cheese. This is so much better than just warming it up in the microwave. 
fryer. Okay, the number one thing that we make over and over again in our air fryer is bacon. We always purchase the thick cut bacon because it just tastes way better. And we use it in salads, with burgers, for breakfast, anything. And the air fryer is a game changer. You don't have to make bacon on the stove anymore or the oven where it's it's everywhere and it makes a giant mess. You just throw it in the air fryer, it's all enclosed and you don't have to babysit it. To make bacon in your air fryer, I always put it in a cold air fryer and then I turn it on to 400 degrees and I go about five to seven minutes, checking about every 30 seconds starting after about half the time. So if I'll put it in for seven minutes, check it around four minutes and then about every 30 to 60 seconds after that. If you have regular cut bacon, then it's about five minutes and I start checking in about two minutes. Depending on how your air fryer cooks, I like to flip mine about halfway between. And if you like your bacon crispier, you can always add a couple seconds. Or if it looks good, once you pull it out around six and a half minutes or six minutes, then you can take it from there. I love making bacon in my air fryer because one, it's pretty mess free. And two, all that grease drips through the grate. And so it's really easy to clean. One of the things that we love to do for a really quick and simple dinner is to make air fryer chicken wings. Making chicken wings in the air fryer is a total game changer because you just throw it in and less than 30 minutes later, you've got an incredibly delicious meal. The great thing about making chicken wings in the air fryer is that you can make them plain or you can add a little bit of breading, something to make them a little bit more crispy. The other great thing is that you can make them from fresh or frozen, so then it's really convenient if you forget to defrost or if you just have a bag of frozen chicken wings in your freezer. So to make the chicken wings, I preheat my air fryer to the highest setting it goes, you between 400 and 425. Let it preheat for about four to 10 minutes. And then I'll just season my wings with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, garlic powder, jerk seasoning, whatever you want. And then I throw them in there for about 25 minutes for frozen and 20 minutes for fresh. You wanna shake the wings every five minutes or so just to make sure they're getting evenly cooked and browned. I have recipes for fresh or frozen chicken wings on my website. I also have this video that I'll link here for breaded chicken wings. It's just a one bowl, super quick method. Mix it all up and then throw it in the air fryer for delicious chicken wings that are not fried. The next thing I use my air fryer for weekly, almost daily, is for roasting vegetables. Specifically, I love doing broccoli. I just buy a large bag of broccoli at Sam's Club or Costco, and then I always have it in the fridge. And while I'm preparing dinner, I can throw some broccoli in the air fryer at about 400 degrees or higher if your air fryer goes higher than that. But I do 400 degrees for about seven to eight minutes. All you have to do is add the broccoli to the air fryer basket. I like to spritz it with a little bit of olive oil spray, salt and pepper, garlic powder, and then just let it cook. And then I'll shake the basket about every two minutes or until it looks done and cooked to my liking. Next, we love doing just frozen sausage links or patties in the air fryer. I like to send my kids off with some protein before they go to school. So we make these almost every single day. They're so easy to do in the air fryer and they taste amazing. So all I do is I just take the frozen sausage patties or sausage links like this and I dump them in the air fryer and we cook them for about five to eight minutes depending on how crispy you like them. I like mine really crispy so I do mine extra but my kids like them softer. Okay, the best part about making these sausage links in the air fryer is that they get super crispy as if they were like deep fried, but they're not. And so they get this perfectly browned like crispness all over. They don't get burned or dried out like when I make them on the stove. So the air fryer is honestly amazing. The other good thing about the air fryer is that it kind of drips down all that excess grease. And so it's a little bit healthier as well. This next one is a little tip or a hack to make your tortilla chips taste amazing. Everyone loves this tip and everyone loves it when I serve it at a party or an appetizer, just like whenever we're having chips and salsa, it elevates it just so much. So we just put our store-bought tortilla chips in the air fryer. I do almost everything at 400 degrees unless it's kind of more delicate. So 400 degrees and you only need about one to three minutes and then I shake about every 30 seconds just to get them nice and toasty and brown. The flavor honestly tastes so much better. It's like the difference between butter, which is good, and browned butter, which is like phenomenal. So if you have regular tortilla chips, if you air fry them and toast them, they come out warm and toasty. Like the flavor is honestly 
amazing. So definitely do air fried tortilla chips. This next one is really cool. It's making roasted garlic in the air fryer. After you take your fresh garlic cloves out, you just put them in a little square of foil, and then I do salt and pepper, a little olive oil, and then you just wrap that up tightly, put it in a preheated air fryer around 350 to 400 degrees, just kind of that medium high temperature. And then I let that roast for about 20 minutes or until the garlic was soft and golden brown. After it cools, you can mash that up and put it into mashed potatoes. I made an incredible roasted garlic feta dip for Harmon's earlier this summer. It was out of this world, but it's so easy to do that. And then you don't have to like warm up the oven, just do it in the air fryer, especially for just like a couple cloves of garlic, definitely use the air fryer. So what I made were some air fried chickpeas and holy cow, they were incredible. I don't have this recipe on my website yet, but I have an Instagram reel that I'm gonna show you right here. All I did was take a can of chickpeas, drain them, and then I just toss them in a little bit of olive oil and some Cajun seasoning, some garlic, salt and pepper, some paprika, just all those yummy, delicious seasonings. And then I threw them in the air fryer at 400 degrees. They took about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes to get them nice and crispy and crunchy. But then I just snacked on those for days. They were incredible really high protein healthy low fat and so those air fried roasted chickpeas insane definitely try those next we love making these bacon wrapped smokies especially for new year's eve these are a highly requested item for any party i go to so all you need to do is take some of those little sausage little smoky things and then i like to use thick cut bacon it just makes it just i don't know it just tastes better with thick cut bacon i cut the bacon into one inch pieces and then i wrap a piece of bacon around each smoky secure it with a toothpick and then i <clears throat> and then I place them on a piece of foil in the air fryer. After that, you take just about a teaspoon of brown sugar and then you kind of pack it onto each individual piece of Little Smoky wrapped in bacon. So I cook the Little Smokies at 400 degrees for just about 10 minutes. Make sure you check them halfway through around the five to eight minute mark to make sure they're not burning or if you need to adjust or change anything in the basket. And then they come out so just like caramelized, smoky, crispy, sweet, so, so good. Make sure you make those for New Year's Eve. On that same note, something I really like to do is just to make air fryer nachos. So I will add some tortilla chips into like a pie pan, a cake dish, anything that can fit in your air fryer basket and also something that is oven safe. So if you don't have anything like that, you can also just use like a little square of foil. But I add the tortilla chips to you know, whatever I'm putting in the air fryer, sprinkle them with some cheese and then just toast them for about 30 to 60 seconds. The cheese melts, you can also add other toppings and then you've got super easy nachos that are way better in the air fryer versus the microwave. This next one is really convenient when you're only cooking for about one or two people. It's making steak in your air fryer. This is one of the top recipes on my website and for good reason. If you are just busy and you don't wanna babysit something on the stove or if you're not a super confident cook, this is just a really easy way to make steak in the air fryer. So I always make sure the steaks are at room temperature so then they cook evenly. Dry them off with a paper towel because you don't want any liquid on the surface of the meat and then season them with a coarse salt like a kosher salt and pepper or any other seasonings that you like. And then you add your seasoned steaks to the air fryer at 400 degrees for only about 10 to 12 minutes. Flipping halfway through and of course always checking the internal temperature with an instant read thermometer that is so important. You can can cook the steak to your liking depending on how well done or rare you like it. I prefer a medium to medium well steak so anywhere between like 140 and 150 ish is when I'll pull it and then you let it rest add a little bit of butter on there and then you have a delicious steak that you really didn't work very hard for. This recipe for air fryer chicken breast is really, really nice because you don't have to preheat your big oven to just make one or two chicken breasts. So the key to making chicken breast in the air fryer is to make sure that you're not putting a cold giant piece of chicken in the air fryer. Take that chicken breast out of the fridge between 45 and 60 minutes before you plan to cook them so it can kind of come up to room temperature. This will help the chicken cook much more evenly so it's not dry on the outside and raw on the inside. So after you take your chicken breasts that have been sitting at room temperature, I like to trim any fat or anything on them and then pat them down with a paper towel to dry them off. I like to spritz them with a little bit of olive oil and then season however you want. If you wanna go really 
simple. You can just do salt and pepper and some garlic powder. You can use a seasoning blend like lemon pepper or Cajun seasoning. And then you put them in the preheated air fryer at 360 degrees. Since chicken breasts are really thick, I like to cook them for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the internal temperature of that chicken reaches 165 degrees. Since it's cooking for a long time and I only have two of them in here, about halfway through cooking, you can add any sort of vegetable. Today I used carrots and then you have a full meal that's ready in the air fryer. If you want to butterfly your chicken breasts open so they're much thinner, if you want to pound them out, it will take much less time. So you can adjust to about 15 minutes or less. Just check them about every five minutes starting at the halfway point. This last one is something that is incredibly easy and totally foolproof. It's air fryer salmon. This is also a really popular recipe on my website because it's just so simple. So you take your salmon fillets, whatever you want, and the ones on my website are thicker, so they're like an inch and a half or so on one side, and then they taper down. But if you cut them kind of this way along the fillet, you know, you just have to make sure you always have an instant rate thermometer whenever you're cooking meat, whenever you're cooking really, to make sure that your food is perfectly done, not underdone, not overdone, just perfectly done. Okay, so you just preheat your air fryer to 400 degrees, season your salmon filet with whatever you want. I always like to use the Redmond um, organic lemon pepper mix, seasoning mix, because it has like real pieces of lemon. It's all organic. They use Redmond real salt, which you know I'm obsessed with. And that is just a really easy, simple seasoning to use on fish. I also really like to use Cajun seasoning because I like a little bit of spice and Oh man, now I really want salmon for dinner or Yum. for lunch. Okay, so I usually just spray my salmon. I spritz it with a little bit of olive oil spray and then add it to the air fryer at 400 degrees for just like nine to 11 minutes. All air fryers cook at a little bit of a different, you know, temperature and intensity. So you really have to just kind of get to know your air fryer and see what works best. But about nine to 11 minutes and you can flip it if you want and always make sure you check that temperature. For salmon, you should always cook to a minimum temperature of 145 degrees. So that's what I usually do. And then I remove the salmon from the air fryer. I usually like to also stick a couple vegetables in there too, especially if I'm just cooking for myself. So broccoli, Brussels sprouts, green beans, something that cooks for about the same amount of time. And then you've got a super healthy, easy lunch that you really didn't have to work for at all. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope this video helped give you some ideas of what you could throw in your air fryer. Don't be intimidated, honestly, it's like using a microwave for the first time. You probably, you know, back in the day, people probably didn't know what could go in there, but honestly, anything that can be microwaved or put in the oven can go in the air fryer. And it's oftentimes so much faster and so much better in the air fryer as well. So definitely watch this playlist right here with all my air fryer recipes, videos, and tutorials, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.